Hey guys, welcome back to Black, White, and the Grace. My name is Kylie and welcome to our farm. It has been a bit since I have filmed a video and it I have no excuse except for school started <laughs> and we homeschool my three boys and it's just been kind of getting into the flow again and it caught up to me. We have had rain off and on today and it, it was rainy all day yesterday which was really nice. It's been a good change. It's pretty cold, cool today. Not cold, but cool. Tonight, I actually need to go, remember to go shut the greenhouse, which I need to harvest some zucchinis and stuff out of. I might need to harvest anything I see because we might lose it all tonight. It's supposed to get really, really cold tonight. It's the high of 50 today, but its I don't think it's gotten up that high yet. Where I'm at right now is our high tunnel plot. I'm actually sitting on a pile of lumber that is meant for our addition that's been a, one thing after another. So, but I'm on the lumber in the middle of the high tunnel plot. We're actually gonna be building around this. Our original plan was to have our handyman. He is super crazy busy right now. So we're having a family like barn raising, but greenhouse raising on Saturday morning. We're getting breakfast for these peeps. And these are the main poles behind me. A high tunnel, I'll insert a picture here so you can kind of see what high tunnel is. It's just a massive plastic greenhouse. The dimensions of ours are 30 feet wide, 72 feet long, and 14 feet tall, which is huge. And where it is in comparison, I'd be in the exact middle of the high tunnel right now. And if we're just, I don't wanna make you sick. Okay, yeah, so right there is the roof of our little greenhouse, my lovely pile of lumber here. That's the market garden in the white fence. The high tunnel plot is across the driveway. You can see the driveway here. And here's the high tunnel plot. We are going to put, there's a little spot right there where the tin drops down and goes to like a two feet stretch. Right there, there's a portion between, let's see if you can see it. Yeah, between that T post and that board right there, that little section, might do a bigger, I might do a big gate between the post and the other, oh my gosh, you know how hard this is? Between that post and this T post here to do a gate. So that way we can easily go back and forth. I feel like you'd want to go back and forth to make it easy instead of going all the way around. We're also a zone three. So a zone three, this high tunnel is gonna come in massive. Not so much, I know in like other places down south where it rains a ton, they use high tunnels to keep the rain off. That's not our goal here. Our goal is just to keep a moderate temperature in the summer. <laughs> oh, it's such a beautiful day. The tree in our front yard is turning. The little, we don't have many deciduous trees, so it's special when they turn. I have carrots under here. Hello, they're doing okay. I put frost cover on them. A few things that have happened in this garden. Well, one is we harvested our, our patat, we harvested our potatoes. It was not a very good success. Holy crap. I love this. <laughs> My mom was like, hey, I'll take your turnips because they're going to store them. And I was like, okay, I have some huge ones. And she's like, mine aren't getting that big. I'm like, mama, turnips aren't supposed to be this big. And we've opened these up and they're not pithy inside. They're not hollow. And I've shown you some big ones. I have, but this folks takes the cake. Oh my gosh. This one start is splitting. This is insane. <laughs> the deer have gotten to the greens. It's heavier than sin. This is crazy, right? Like, yeah, it's splitting, but it's got like, a million, is this like, I don't know. This is crazy. Holy crapola. This looks like, is it, did some fuse together? That's what it looks like. I don't know. I got a giant turnip, yo. This would feed a small army. Totally. Okay, there. Don't even let your turnips get this big. This is huge. Too big. My goats are like, could we, uh, have some of those greens. I need to come through with my basket, harvest the rest of these. I actually have some ones that are reasonable sized, 
behind me. We've been having some major deer issues. So I put up, it was over our gates. It's never been an issue before with the gates. Everything else is like five, six foot fencing and which deer will jump five, six feet. So right now the gates were the biggest issue. If they keep getting in, the tin back here is like five and a half feet. So the deer could very well be getting in. Ah oh, man, I think it's too big. Squash, this is the gray squash. This is from, ba this is a Baker Creek seed, but I know you can buy it anywhere. This one is a little big, but that's okay. We'll eat it still. I'll probably shred it up. So with zucchini, this huge, just, you can shred it, makes chocolate chip zucchini. <laughs> chocolate chip zucchini bread out of it. My grandmother has a recipe that we all use. It's quite famous in our family for chocolate chip zucchini bread. This is my first zucchini out of here. Yep. Um, a lot of things died, but a lot of things are growing still. I have tomatoes that have been still been harvesting. A lot of plants did come back after that big freeze. Especially this San Marzano right behind me. There is a tomato growing on it and it looks completely dead. I have been way too lazy to come in here and trim all these out. And that's probably, I was kind of like glad I was because all these tomatoes have still been producing. The ones even that I thought got frosted all the way. They look dead, but life has sprung up. They've had time to bloom and they're growing. Not all of them. Okay, well it is the next day. New day, same overalls. We're at the little garden. I wanted to bring you over here to talk to you about Mia, our expectant dairy cow. Hi, girly goats. We have two dairy goats that actually haven't been bred in a couple years because of Mia. Hi, sweet girl. How you feeling today? Oli. Are you so sh are you so miserable? Are you so miserable? Her due date is actually on Friday. Today is Wednesday. So any day. It could be today. And last year we had kind of a traumatic experience with her calving. If any of you guys watch Justin Rhodes, he had a cow that actually did the same exact thing as Mia, where they delivered their placenta first and then the calf was stillborn. We went through the exact same situation. I'll link it here so you can see it for yourself. It's when we first started, so. Right, Mia? And so this year we're praying that all goes well and we don't have the same situation. It was really cool because just last week, Justin Rhodes had his cow, his cow just gave birth as well and didn't have any issues. So that was really encouraging. I'm going to get out of here because we do not trust Olaf. Hi guys. Come to the garden. Mia's just walking by and as she's walking by, I'm looking at a few things. I am still very green when it comes to cow birthing, but I feel like obviously we went through a very traumatic one and learned a lot. Her udder has just kind of ballooned up and it is getting very very full she's getting super uncomfortable you want to look at the back side of the cow her vulva and if it's swelling swelling swollen which hers is extremely swollen and it's obvious to me that she's getting very close so Olaf right here is our steer he is an adopted cow calf for Mia he was the replacement cow. The calf that she delivered was a stillborn, like I just said. And so the next day we went out and got Olaf. So less than, I think 18 hours, we had him home and she was like in love with him and he took, he got had to get hungry enough. So Olaf is really unpredictable. He's a steer, which means he is a castrated male. And this is a homestead. So I've talked about this before, or we have, 
feeder pigs, we have a steer, we have, those are, are actually our only sources of meat. Right now we still have quite a bit of beef in our fridge from the neighbors right across the street. And then this steer will soon replace that, the our depleting meat source. He is not trustworthy and I have a hard time with the whole thing knowing where your meat comes from. It's kind of a difficult situation. If I'm going to be a meat eater, I need to take it's I there was a, when we got our neighbor's cow last year I like didn't eat meat but I really wanted a cheeseburger when I was out in town and then I was like I have a serious problem like I am totally fine eating random beef that I have no idea how it was sourced how it lived its life I know exactly how that cow I saw it every single day so and it's the same with ours and it can be a sad thing like but he's had a really good life He's been on, he had like a full season with his mom, like nursing with normally a dairy cow, their calf would get pulled away like day one. He obviously hasn't had that and he's lived a good life. Now it's at the point where he's dangerous, where we feel incredibly uncomfortable. We don't let our children come out in the pasture. We have to strategically throw feed on one side of the pasture so we can get in to see the pigs. And I don't like that. I don't want to have, to be so cautious that I'm nervous that something could happen to myself or my children, which would be even worse. So that's that. So Mia is due to calf on her udder filled up. It ballooned up like a week and a half ago. And I was like, oh, it doubled. Now this, but it wasn't, it was still soft. You couldn't see like vein ripples or anything like that. You could still tell. Today, it looks like I can see vein ripples, it looks tight, it looks like it's swelled up pretty good, which she delivered last year on her due date. And that was her first time. So she was a heifer. A heifer is a first time mom cow. They don't technically become a cow until after they deliver. So Mia is now a cow and this is her second time delivering. Lord willing, that'll be good. So that'll be Friday. Saturday, we have the high tunnel put up. It's like, a, I feel like it's like an old fashioned barn raising, but it's like a greenhouse. Oh. Hey mama, come down here. Mama Mia. Come on, sweet girl. The garden is still trucking along. I haven't even checked. I see my lettuces sprouted that I planted. Parsnips, they won't have time to grow. I think they'll overwinter and hopefully come up in the spring. That's a hope. My kale is looking sad over there, but looking good here. That's all good news. Calendula is just loving its best life. I need to get out here and save more of that and save the seeds. Oh, my lights fell down. Oh yeah, my lettuce is popping. Some, in some places it is, <laughs> not in every place. These fava beans. I should have trellised these guys, I did not. They feeling fat. I just harvested some a couple weeks ago and there was nothing in it. And these small ones, I think I'm just gonna let them dry on the bush. Next year, maybe we'll do a better job trellising. Oh wow, look at these. These are a bean we can grow in this area. First time growing it. I don't know anything about them <laughs> besides that they like frost. I have no recipes for you. Uh, this is a, truly an experiment. This one's got a issue, so let's, I gotta open it up. I gotta take you over to see Mia. Hi. You can see her udder. You can see her udder is getting pretty huge. She is walking completely uncomfortable. Inside the fava bean. Can you see that? It's kind of weirded me out. Ooh. I think this one is just bad just because it was opened that bean but I'm curious about this big fat one in here the rest of them that are big I think I'm just gonna I saw a recipe in a French cookbook for fava bean soup and it was just kind of blended they kind of look like a lima bean these fava beans can be eaten fresh I've you can people grill them I've seen them in a soup I'm gonna I'm so nervous about this. 
Ugh. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting. It's actually really good. It's really good. So good. It just tastes like a green bean. I don't know what I was expecting. It has a different texture. It's a little more fuzzy. It's got a lot of... The texture doesn't really bother me though. It's got a lot of like mucilage in it. It's fuzzy, kind of... I don't know. I didn't know we could grow these here until this year, until my mom told me. But the beans inside are like this, and you can eat these too. It says online, like, if they're tender enough, they're good for a snack. I don't know if this is too old. But it's just, just like eating a green bean off a vine. Just a little different texture. But the flavor is the same. I'm really pleased with this because this brings a whole nother thing. Because they're frost tolerant, obviously. So I'm going to be growing these in bulk massive fava bean outdoors they do great in all the frosts and all the freezes so uh okay so fava beans for the win so cow birth high tunnel piglets papa pig we got to move to my parents this week that's gonna be a whole feat this dang papa pig we've been like trying to get him we have been trying to get him over to my parents that's why we have the horse trailer out here you our piglets here are our piglets we have five <coughs> come on my pig come on my pig hi pepper it's like you got snacks i should have brought you snacks how rude of me so we have five piglets we lost Two. It's just the way of life on a farm. You win some, you lose some. Yeah, I should have brought you some. Yeah, I know. So there it is. Piglets, calves, high tunnels, all the things. The garden's still going. We're still working on all that. Fall is just kind of a crazy time on the farm. We're, I'm waiting out here for a wood delivery. <laughs> I'm waiting out here for a wood delivery for to put up a little update for you we are about to close down some of the beds in the market garden and i got this here fence it's a portable electric netting for poultry and i think i'm gonna make like a off-brand justin rhodes chicken thing yep <laughs> it's out oh, that'll be interesting well guys i'll see you on my next video thanks for following along and be sure to subscribe bye guys